Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and I'm here to share with you my outside the box ideas that I created with the October 2021 paper pumpkin kit from Stampin' Up! titled Peaceful Christmas. These kits, which are delivered straight to my mailbox each month, contain everything I need to make fun, creative paper crafting cards and projects. This month's kit contains supplies for making 10 stunning Christmas cards, five each of two different designs. Each kit includes a publication like this one with directions and full color illustrations, details about the kit, and a link to a how-to video so you can assemble the cards or projects as shown. The kit also includes inks and stamps that can be used again and again even after the consumables are used up. This October kit contained a shaded spruce ink pad and this exclusive stamp set. The kits are a Stampin' Up! product, so the colors, images, and supplies always coordinate with many other Stampin' Up! products that they have. I'll be using some of these in my alternate projects that I create today. You can find the items I used listed below and linked to my online store, along with links to learning more about paper pumpkin kits, starting your subscription through me so I can spoil you with exclusive ideas, gifts, and prizes, joining my Paper Pumpkin fan club on Facebook where you can see even more alternate project ideas shared daily, and if you're watching my video on YouTube, a link to my website where I've shared photos of the projects you're going to see today. I received a large clear block in my first Paper Pumpkin kit to use with all my future stamps. That tool and my scissors are the only extra items I really need for completing my kits as is. But you'll notice that I substitute that block for the ergonomic Stampin' Up! blocks since I have several of those. I also use my larger version of the ink pad and some additional adhesive such as my Stampin' Seal. You won't need these of course, but they're available products from Stampin' Up! and they're a bit easier for, and quicker for me to use while I demonstrate in my video. By the way, if you're looking for ideas for pass kits, visit my website at stampyourartout.com, click on Paper Pumpkin in the top menu, then choose Recent or Older Posts. I've been creating and sharing alternates since March of 2013 when Paper Pumpkin first began. I am super excited to create, so let's get started. The first thing I do when I receive one of my Paper Pumpkin kits is I spread out all the supplies, especially the supplies per card. So this right here represents all the pieces that you would need for the two different style cards. And then I look at them and I say, oh my gosh, what inspires me the most? And I have to tell you, this card base is gorgeous. It's a shame to actually take and fold it in half <laughs> and then not use the back side. So um, then I thought to myself, what can I do to make the most of that paper? And I thought about strips little fun strips, um, you know, cutting them into little sections. And then my mind started racing and I came up with all these card ideas so that you could triple the cards in the kit. <laughs> so once again, I'm going to share with you how you can expand this kit and make it more than 10 cards. You can get 30 cards from this kit. And I don't even use the beautiful envelopes for the cards. So you can actually use um, the 10 envelopes for sending the cards or you could you know, do something else with them. But, so let's just take these pieces right here and we're gonna add in some cardstock. So you're gonna need basic black cardstock and basic white. If you're gonna take the whole kit and multiply it to get 30 cards, then you're going to need 12 and a half sheets of basic black, seven and a half sheets of basic white cardstock, and then you'll need some additional envelopes. And the envelopes I'm using are the basic white medium size. If you don't want to use the envelopes that come in the kit and save them for something else, then you'll need 30 of these. Otherwise, you'll just need 20. As far as tools go, I'll share those as we go, like the trimmer. I'm going to use that one right away. Um, we're also going to be using some black ink, and we have the Memento Tuxedo Black Ink in addition to the shaded spruce color that comes in your kit. So let's go ahead and just work with converting two cards into six. I'm not going to do the whole kit in front of you, but I'm at least going to show you how to take and make the base cards and all of those cards that I show you, you just do those five times and you'll ha end up having 30 cards. So for our first couple cards that we're gonna do, we're gonna score once and cut once to get two card bases. So we're gonna take our eight and a half by 11 card stock and we're gonna 
bring the edge to the four and a quarter inch mark and that's going to um, split this in half here and we're going to score using our scoring blade and then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees and bring it halfway to the five and a half inch mark because this is 11 inches in this direction and we're going to cut and now we have two card bases ready to go I'm just going to use my bone folder give that a good crease and now I have that piece and we'll do the same thing with this one now I did say um, I did say 12 and a half black. So if you take that and divide that by five, you're actually using two and a half sheets of black. So we're gonna cut one more card base this direction. You would, of course, if you're gonna do the whole kit, you would go ahead and cut that or score that one as well. But we're gonna just set that aside and not use it. And we're going to score this one at five, uh, four and a quarter inches. So we now have three card bases that go in the same direction. For this black, we're going to score this way. We're going to score halfway at five and a half. And then we're going to cut halfway at four and a quarter. And we've got our two card bases going this way instead. We'll save those. The Whisper White is going to end up, I'm sorry, the Whisper White. We used to have Whisper White. The Basic White is going to end up becoming layers because we have basic black cardstock for our base. But we'll start with these first. We're actually going to take um, this one and this piece here. We're going to bring in a half of one of the red uh, banner pieces. And then we're going to cut this piece uh, for our future cards so that we have a little strip to use. So for, we're going to make three cards out of this card base here. And we're going to divide it into three. So eight and a half divided by three. Um, leaves us about two and three quarter inches of cardstock in this direction with a little bit that we're going to trim off. We could trim it off or we could keep it. I'm going to go ahead and trim it off on mine. But let's go ahead and cut then to two and three quarter inches. Don't fold your cardstock, by the way. And then we're going to turn it around and we're going to cut again at two and three quarter inches. That gives us two different cards to work with. And then I'm just going to cut off a little bit here. Again, you don't need to, but I'm doing it. <laughs> so we're just trimming off that much so that we have another two and three quarter inches. And I originally did this this way when I designed my cards because I was going to make them all the same. And then I changed my mind. <laughs> so I had to do them all different. We're going to take this one first. And then we also need um, that strip that I was talking about. So we're going to cut into our green card base um, so that we're cutting off just a fourth of an inch along one of the edges. We're going to save this and then we need white for the inside. So we're going to cut this in half at five and a half inches and then we're going to cut the same width as this piece here. This is going to be an inside layer that is going to kind of mimic the outside. So we have two pieces that are five and a half inches tall by two and three quarter inches. <laughs> now we're going to cut a piece in the same direction. So this is our five and a half inch tall piece. We're going to cut this to two and a half inches. This is going to become a layer. This layer is three and a quarter inches wide. This is going to be a layer on one of our cards. So don't cut into that piece anymore. But this one we're going to turn and we're going to cut it at one inch. This is going to be a sentiment layer for our card. And then we're going to cut this to three and a half inches. This piece is going to be cut in half. And right now it is a little over three and a quarter inches. So that means we want to do one and a half plus three more sixteenths. So just under two and three quarters would cut that in half. And we're going to use one of one of the halves. This we're going to set aside for a couple other cards too, so hang on to that. And now we're ready to cut a little banner out from this piece here. So we're going to trim from corner in and from corner in. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but that's how you get a little banner. Um, you just aim for the middle. So you're going to start at the corner, aim to the middle, start at the corner, aim to the middle. Now if that is too hard, <laughs> you could take this piece and you could layer, lay it over the top as a guide 
and then trim along there. So you could do that for your red piece here. We could, I'll just demonstrate that. So you put it really close, if not right to the end. Make sure everything's lined up straight. And then you cut and you cut and you're using the guide from the banner piece on top. Once you have that done, you're just going to eyeball and cut this in half. You could use the trimmer if you want to, but you just want to have a couple small pieces like this. And you could do the same thing for this one. You don't have to have this super long piece, but um, because we have it to spare, I'm going to go ahead and do that. We don't have a lot of red in the kit. This is going to get put on the inside. If you want to stamp your sentiment, I would recommend doing that first. I'm just using seal adhesive. Again, it's just a little bit easier for me to use than the glue dots. Um, when I want to go quickly. So we're going to center this and we're going to lay it down. Now what I do if I happen to have like a fraction of a piece off I make sure that one edge is lined up and the other edge if it overlaps a bit I can take and turn it over and trim it. But this one looks like it's pretty accurate. The next piece to go on is this one here and we're just going to add that with some dimensionals. Now you have dimensionals that come in the kit but if you're going to expand your kit and make 30 cards instead of 10, you may need to invest in our Stampin' Dimensionals. They come in two different sizes. This is the standard size. And then, um, oh, I'm going to put two more on. And then we have um, the smaller ones. So you may have seen them if you've been a Paper Pumpkin subscriber for a while. We have the regular and the mini. I'm using the regular size. So we'll put that right on top, also centered like so. These two pieces are just going to kind of jut out the sides. So we're going to flip them over and add some seal adhesive, or you could again use the glue dots that come in the kit. And fun fact for those of you that are newer subscribers, you actually have a little ruler on the inside of your direction sheet. So we're going to use that ruler and we're going to place one of our pieces one and an eighth of an inch up high from the side here like so. So again, just using your ruler as a guide, just make sure that you're right above that one and an eighth inch mark. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. So we're going to come down from one and an eighth inches here on this side, tuck it in, go in about the same distance. And then what it does, it looks like one big banner that has gone across the whole side, making sure it's tilted straight here. Perfect. This piece is going to go across the middle, so you're just going to add some um, adhesive right through there and then lay this down and center it. And you want to center it between the two notches of your red. Now we're going to put uh, a piece on top that is stamped with the words Peaceful Christmas Wishes. We're going to add this with dimensionals and because we're going to be going across something that may loosen up, I'm going to go ahead and um, add my dimensionals so that they're kind of in the middle, but they're also kind of zigzagging back and forth for stability. And that should help to hold that green piece in place and you'll just center that like that. Gorgeous! And then the sparkle on the card, of course, just, you know, that's the embellishment. You don't have to do much more because there's that all that shimmer in the paper. That's card number one. For card number two, you're going to use another one of the card bases that fold like, folds like that. And then you're going to use this three and a quarter inch wide by five and a half inch tall piece that I told you to save. That's going to be for the inside. This is going to be for the outside and we're going to expand it. We're going to make it stretch a little bit. This is the one with the tallest tree. So we're going to cut it at one and a half inches this way. So we're including that whole tree. And then this piece, which is one and a quarter inches left, is going to get cut into two parts. So you can have a piece that is seven eighths of an inch and you're going to have a piece that is three eighths of an inch. So if you're having trouble putting that in your trimmer and cutting it, you can just take like a little post-it note. Oh, this one has been inked up. That's okay. Just take your little post-it note and hold it still on your trimmer. And that way it won't move on you. Now we have our pieces and we can put them back in order 
and we're going to add those to the front of our card a little bit stretched out so that they have um, a wider look to them. We need one more piece to cut and that's going to be cut from this scrap that remember was two and a half inches wide on our last card. So we're going to now cut this to two and a quarter inches. We're going to cut this to two and a quarter inches. And that should leave us with another square that is two and a quarter inches. Okay, now we're going to take these pieces and we're going to add them one at a time. So just add a little bit of seal adhesive and see where the score line is on there. You're not going to notice that from the front side. You're not going to see it in there. We're going to add this to this, um, the left edge of our card, leaving just about like a sixteenth of an inch. Now this brings this to my attention. When you have a card and you've folded it in half, if you see any of the cardstock that's behind it sticking out, then that needs to be flipped over and used as the front. Now I don't, I seem to be flush with um, my cuts there, but if that happens to be the case, you want to make sure that you're having that gap show on the back of the card instead of the front. So we'll just add this like that with about a sixteenth of an inch. And again, if you have any need for trimming, you want to make sure that you do that. And then we'll add this piece, leaving about a sixteenth of an inch gap. And you can spread them out further if that's what you'd like to do. I just like that small hint of black in there. We're going to stamp this piece next, so we're going to bring in the larger version of the shaded spruce ink just because it's easier for me to work with once again open that up and we're going to do the trees and we're going to stamp them twice first we're going to stamp them with full color along the bottom of our two and a half, uh, two and a quarter by two and a quarter inch piece here so we'll just stamp like this and then we're going to ink it up again but stamp it off now some of you might say well why don't you just shift it and stamp it again but we have dark trees on the two edges here and that might mess it up it might make it look bad so we're going to stamp off onto our scrap paper to lighten the color and then we'll come in and we'll shift slightly to get a different kind of look here kind of varying the height of the trees and that gives us the illusion that we have trees further in the background we're going to bring in our black ink and that same sentiment with the peaceful word on it and we're going to stamp that above we're going to bring in some twine. Now you get plenty of twine. You get enough for nine inches per card. They tell you to use six inches per card. So we're going to take that nine inches and I know it's kind of pushing it, but we're going to cut um, four and sorry, I'm bringing in my regular ruler, uh, four and a half inches so that we can do two cards with this ribbon in our set of six. Because again, if you were doing just the regular cards you'd have nine inches so we need to take that and divide it into two to get get it to last for two different cards so you're just going to tie a little bow into each of those strands of twine you can opt to stamp a sentiment on this piece which will again go on the inside of the cards so we'll do that right now we're going to make it go right close to that edge just to kind of give that same pattern as what we have on the front and then this will get onto our card using dimensionals. And then my adhesive of choice for the twine is the glue dots from the kit. So we will use those. And it's super easy to pick that up with the take your pick tool. So we're just gonna place a little glue dot right here, peel off the backing, and then we're gonna do a little bit of a rolling action. So you're gonna take an kind of manipulate it so it bunches up a bit and gets skinnier and then we'll add our twine right there so we have a little bit of color on that one with the red and the green ink the red twine and the green ink that's card number two for card number three we're going to grab that third card base this time we're going to add an extra score line in it so we're going to bring our trimmer in and we're going to score at one and a half inches. We're going to fold that back like a Z fold, grab our bone folder, score it. So yes, indeed we are making a Z fold type card. 
the inside of our card is going to get a couple different pieces of white. So we're going to have two areas here that receive some white. And those two areas are each going to be just over two and a half inches. So they're going to be two and five eighths of an inch. So you're going to start right there. So two and five eighths by five and a half. You're going to do two of those. And then we're going to use this last section from our card front from the from the kit and we're going to cut it in half. So if it is two and three quarters or two and three fourths inches wide, to half that you're going to do one and three eighths. So you'll just position it here like that. We'll bring in this little guy here, the two and a quarter by two and a quarter inch piece and our already tied bow. We're going to stamp this the same way we did the other one. So now let's go ahead and assemble. These two pieces go next to each other, so when we adhere them to the card, we want to make sure that they look lined up. So we're going to close our card, and we're going to connect this piece to this piece so that the edge here meets up with this folded edge. You're, ha you're going to have about an eighth of an inch um, left on the side here. We'll do the same thing with this one. And I noticed as I was applying this piece here that in this case I actually do have um, papers that are extending beyond. So we're going to trim them up. You can see right there. So just grab your snips. These pieces will go on the inside between the two designer paper pieces. So there we go. Now we have a scene and when we open it you can see that there's places to write. You could add a photo to the inside of any of these cards. For the last two I guess I would add a family photo here or here. For this one you could leave one of these blank and have a nice narrow little photo. And then we've got this layer here, which I've done the same way as the other one, except I put the red ribbon off to the side. And we're just going to add dimensionals to adhere that. Oops, we can't put dimensionals there because, <laughs> I'm glad I made that mistake, because this is going to get attached just to this panel. So you just want to have a dimensional on the top and the bottom. You're going to center it and stick it down. And now we have our card that opens like that. Very fun. That's our third card. Let's go on to the fourth one. The fourth and fifth cards will receive the black base that opens this direction. For the first one we'll use the plaid circle. We'll use the Noel. We'll use another one of these little red banner strips. And we're going to use some vellum trees. Now the trees we're going to trim down. We're going to take our paper snips and we're going to cut between them at this spot right here. So we've got a set of two trees and then another card we'll use this one. You can just round off any areas where you think that your scissors didn't cut very well. So let's t first take and add this to our little plaid or buffalo plaid um, circle and when we do that you can do it either direction but you want to make sure that the Noel lines up with the lines in your plaid so you can see I'm not going to put any adhesive on the back side of the L just the main part of the N and the rest of the letters we're just going to add just a little bit just a thin line Set that aside to dry. Then we're going to take this piece and we're going to cut it in half. And then we're going to cut this piece in half again. Save this. These two we'll be using. We're going to put the trees down onto our card, onto the front of our card, like so. So in order to do that, we can either use the multi-purpose liquid glue or we could use little glue dots, but it's going to get covered up 
ever so slightly. I think I'm going to shift this a little bit more. It's going to get covered up a little bit by the plaid circle. So you can see where the adhesive could go. It could go underneath this tiny little part of the tree here, and it can be kind of in this spot here. Adhesive shows through vellum, so you don't want to have um, that happen on your card. You can see there, so you don't want to have adhesive back up through here. So there's that. This little guy is going to come out this direction here. So we'll put some seal adhesive back there. I like to work with the tape runner adhesive, like the seal more so than this because once this dries it's pretty darn hard to shift anything but you can always take and and shift this even if you have um, let it sit there for a while so we'll just add that right about there and then we'll add the other one so that it's coming out at the same height on the other side and it's shorter so our circle is going to be um, shifted over a little bit just going to bring this down here as a guide for how high to go. And then we can lay this over the top and check, and it looks pretty good. So I think we'll just squish those down. This is going to get added with dimensionals. Three on the back for stabilization. So the goal is to cover up those little dots there of glue and then the edges of these. You also want to make sure that this line here on the buffalo plaid lines up with the, um, you know, goes parallel with the base of the card. And then let's bring in those fun little glittery embellishments. We'll use the other end of our take your pick tool and we'll push against one to lift it up. We're going to add that here and we'll add this one down here. Last but not least is a little bit of basic white layering on the inside. So you're going to take a second sheet of basic white and we're going to trim it for two inside layers that are five inches by three and three quarter inches. And the reason why I chose that size is because on our next card, this is going to become our layer. So these two will go on the next card. This one can get added to the inside of this one. And again, you could stamp your sentiment on it first before you would add your adhesive if you want to have an inside greeting. That way, if you do mess up the inside greeting, you can flip it over and um, tape it the other direction. So there is our fourth card. Moving on to our fifth card, we're going to bring in that card base that looks like this. This piece, this piece. We're going to bring in the label. We're going to bring in this piece here, which we're going to cut in half. And then we're going to make another banner end. And again, you could layer it like this to cut, or you could just eyeball it. And we'll be using those fun embellishments too. So for this one, we're going to stamp Holiday Cheer. And we'll use our black ink. When you stamp this down, look at the word cheer because it's the straightest one. And just make sure that that's parallel to the bottom of your label piece while you've centered the rest of the design from the sides and the top. And there we go. This is going to get added with dimensionals. This is, oh, we forgot our other trees. We need our trees too. So here's our trees. Our trees are going to be added. Our little piece like this is going to be added. And then we're going to tuck these in on the end. So in order, in order to do that, we want to do the same trick that we did last time where we kind of visualize where this label is going to sit. And then we look at the trees and figure out where they're going to sit. I think I want them right about there. Which means I can 
take and put um, adhesive anywhere beyond this point here and this point here. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to use the multi-purpose liquid glue and just add a little bit right here and right here. And again, just take and lay it where it's going to be. Use your label as a guide. Stick it down. Now for this piece, which we're going to add next, remember we're going to tuck in the red banners on each side. So you want your dimensionals to be more centered on this piece. So we're going to take and add them more towards the middle. Covering up that adhesive on the trees, making sure that our piece is centered from side to side. We'll grab these two banner pieces. We'll add seal adhesive on the back. And we can use the lines on our buffalo plaid piece here as a guide for when we're adding the banner pieces. Shift things. We're going to add a couple embellishments. Sorry, that's the old way of doing it. I love this new way where you just take and grab it. <laughs> this is card number five. Ta-da! Card number six. I know, you guys are like, wait a minute, you have a whole other card base that you haven't done anything to. That's true. So we're going to do that now. So you can see we've got this fun little white showing now because we cut that strip off that we used on our first card. And we're going to go ahead and just use that idea of having a white ground. But instead of leaving it like that, we're going to tear. So we're going to come in and we're just going to grab about... I don't know, a half, and a half of an inch of this card front section here. And that gives it the illusion of a snowy ground. But we need trees, and we used up our vellum trees. Did we? <laughs> Do you see what's happening here on this piece? If you flip it upside down, you've got this look here. They look like a little bit more whimsical kind of trees. They have, you know, snow that's kind of dipping left and right and, you know, almost like an ice storm came in and then the snow went on top of it. Anyways, we okay, so we're flipping it over. This is the side we're trimming. We're going to go right to that point. Oops, sorry. We're going to go right to this point. So again, like this, flip it over, cut right to that point. And that's going to give it a nice straight edge on that side. Do you see the trees now if you didn't see them before? Pretty fun. <laughs> okay, and then this side we're just going to trim straight down because it's going to disappear behind a label. So now you've got these wacky little trees. And you can leave them as is if you want to. Or you can come in and kind of clean them up a little bit. I'm just going to trim that off. And... Mm, I don't know, that's kind of fun up there, but I think I'll trim that portion off like that. And maybe this one like that. It's up to you. You can trim them or not. You can leave them as is. Okay, and then we've got our gray little wooden background here. And we have one more of these guys, which you can freehand. Let's stamp this first. We're going to use our black ink on the gray. We'll stamp that in the middle. This is going to be put up on dimensionals. Um, before we do that, let's add this set of trees. So we're just going to do a little line here of adhesive. And we'll use this as a guide. This is going to go above the um, snow line, and this is going to get tucked right underneath it. So right about there will be a good spot for those trees. This will go up on dimensionals. And because we're going to put embellishments on the two ends here, place your dimensionals more towards the center so that when you're mailing, you don't have like a double thick layer there. So that'll just go right across the glued area nice and straight. This will get added with some seal adhesive 
and tucked in right there. And then we have our fun little glittery embellishments. Gosh, I love these. So there is that finished card, card number six. So again, you can take and make five of each of those cards and you can get 30 cards from your kit. There was a flyer that came in this month's kit advertising the Peaceful Christmas Sweet Collection, which you can find in the mini catalog, our Stampin' Up! mini catalog, July through December, on pages 36 through 37. You can also find these products online, but basically these products and the kit all coordinate with each other really well. So let me introduce those to you, those items that are in that suite. The Peaceful Cabin Stamp Set, similar fonts, lots of um, images that go well with the designs that are in the kit. Then you've got these dies. These dies are items that you would need to use with a die cutting embossing machine, such as our stamp and cut and emboss machine. But you can see that you can stamp these images and you can die cut around them so that you can get them to cut out. Um, very fun for more of the uh, casual or avid crafter. And then you also have this embossing folder. So this is something that you would also need to use the machine with. But basically, you put in your cardstock and you run it through the machine. And when it comes out, that cardstock now has a fun embossed look to it. Very pretty. This is called the, by the way, the Timber 3D embossing folder. And the dies are called the cabin dies. Then also there are some other products in that kit. You get the snowy white velvet sheets and they're just like velvet. I mean, they're, they're soft and um, smooth and fuzzy, <laughs> really pretty to make like snowy backgrounds and stuff. And then you've got this gorgeous ribbon. Um, this is one of my favorites. It's the white glittered organdy ribbon. You can see there's some iridescent little glitter pieces in there. Makes it look like snow. Um, for even more thicker snow, you can use the subtle shimmer sequins for like shaker cards or just to stick on individually. They have a low profile, so if you were to take and use that um, Tombow multi-purpose liquid glue, you could take and have um, things that look like sequins but aren't as high up and so that it, you wouldn't have to worry about as much postage when mailing. Then the other part that is in that suite is the designer paper. And look at the front sheet here. You can see it's very similar. In fact, a, a duplicate of the card front that comes in the kit. So all of these designs in this designer paper, um, which is 12 by 12, by the way, have a foil sheen on one side. And then the flip side does not. Let me show you those designs. And in fact, one of my sheets is a little bit smaller. So I'm going to grab that one out, <laughs> flip these over. And then we'll flip this one over. So now you can see all of the designs on the other side. With our 12 by 12 designer paper, you get two sheets each of the um, six double-sided designs. So 12 sheets total of the 12 by 12. Now, there's some foil paper that I want to highly recommend too to go along with this. This is our silver specialty foil. You can see there's a purple tone to two of the sheets. But then we've got the silver sheet in here. Um, that's just, it's just fun to have things that shimmer. <laughs> I've embossed this with the Timber 3D embossing folder and you can really see embossing well on foil sheets. Another thing that I think goes well with this kit is our red and green foil paper. So um, red like the real red color in the kit and green like the shaded spruce. I have gifted my subscribers that got last month's kit uh, a little sampler of this paper and the foil sheet. So I hope that you have fun creating with this if you're one of my subscribers. We're going to move on to making uh, a gift card holder. So if you decided not to use those envelopes for your tripling the kit cards um, and you want to save them for something else, I have an idea for you. So we're going to make a little gift card holder during this um, continued pandemic. Uh, we're still having shipping issues with many supplies and products out there and everyone's been told, at least I have, um, I, I, it's been on the news, right, that we're supposed to be doing our gift shopping and our card sending early. Um, it's going to be easier on those workers out there who are dealing with shipping and, um, and transporting products and transporting the mail. So do your gift shopping early. Now, if you happen to be more like the average person though, you might have to just succumb to giving gift cards or cash. 
And so if that's the case, let me show you this fun little gift card holder. So this envelope measures three and three quarter inches wide. Half of that is just under three inches. So at the two and seven eighths inch mark, we're gonna go right to this mark here and we're gonna score. You wanna give it a good crease so you can see that line. And then we're gonna come in with our scissors and we're gonna cut on either side of this crease. So we're gonna cut here. Oh, one thing you wanna do is bend this first. We're gonna cut on this side of the crease and then we're gonna cut on this side of the crease. And we're just going right up to that score line like that. And we'll just trim that off. So you have two little flaps that come down like this. Now when you fold it in half, there should be no puckering because you've, you've eliminated that gap in there. That's what this, the removal of that was supposed, to, was supposed to do. Okay, so let's take our bone folder and just flatten it all down. Now, for this side, we're gonna glue it shut. So we're gonna take and put some glue here, we're gonna put some glue under here, but we wanna put a gift card in there, and if we do it just like that, it's gonna disappear. So we kinda have to um, come down a little bit with this section. So we're gonna trim, and we're gonna trim just inside the score line again. And if you can see, you don't need to go too far. You just need to go a little bit so that you can catch that gift card or whatever that's gonna be in there. I haven't cut on both sides of my score line yet, but I'm going to. I've just done it on this side so far. And I've cut down a little over a half of an inch. So you wanna go between a half of an inch and three quarters of an inch. And then you're gonna use a straight edge of some sort and you're gonna use it as a guide, kind of put it down. In fact, you can even use your grid paper as a guide here. And we're gonna take and lay this out and fold this down like that. It helps to, to crease it if you have something um, sitting there. And then we're gonna check and yep, it, it stays covered as long as you don't go too far um, down with this, just you know between the half inch and three quarters of an inch. So on your ruler, it would be five eighths of an inch. <laughs> so you're gonna put that down and then you're gonna fold this straight across and now we can come in and we can trim up on this side. So again, when we fold over, we don't have that gap there. It's just gonna look neater. And underneath this, we're gonna have a little bit of a glue. So you're gonna come in with your Tombow multi-purpose liquid glue. I'm just gonna fold these back so you can see. And we're just gonna place a little bit of adhesive right in through here on that side. And that'll help secure it so that your gift card stays on the one side. So we're just coming down a little bit, okay? Flatten that down. Then you're gonna glue this flap. The last step is to fold this flap. So now we've got it all set up for inserting our gift card. And we'll let this dry. Now this flap is just gonna fold over and it's gonna be allowed to open and shut. So let's crease that back again. Let's put something hard on top of it just to kind of hold it down. This is my E size block. Yes, we have different sizes besides A, B, C, and D. All right, so we're gonna bring in our trimmer now and we're gonna cut some foil sheets. We're actually gonna use that red and green foil sheet pack and we're gonna cut two pieces. One of them is gonna be three and three quarter inches tall and the other one's gonna be one and one quarter inch tall. They are both measuring two and a quarter inches in width. So now let's take and do some basic white layers. So if it's two and a quarter inches in width, we're gonna to go to two and an eighth inch in width for our white so that we have just a little border of our foil all the way around. And this piece, what was it again? Three and three quarters. So we wanna go three and three quarters, but an eighth of an inch back. So that makes it three and five eighths of an inch. And then the other piece, if this is one and, an, um, and a quarter inches tall, that makes this piece one and an eighth inch tall. Let's grab our ink and our stamps. 
We're going to use four different stamps on this project. We're going to use the um, little snowflake stamps and we're going to use some sentiments. Now for the sentiment, we're only going to ink up a portion of this long one. I think it's on there a little wacky. There we go. A portion of it that just says from our home. Okay, because this is a gift card gift, it's not going to be from our home to yours. It's going to be from our home to you. And we'll just take and stamp that so that the words for, uh, from our home are centered left and right on our basic white cardstock. And then we'll ink up this stamp that says sending you peace and joy all year long. This piece will layer up onto our green foil. On this one, we're going to stamp Merry Christmas. So the front piece is going to get stamped with Merry Christmas and layered onto the smaller green foil. So this is for the inside, this is for the outside. And then we have our snowflake image. So for our snowflake image, I thought it would be fun if we just kind of stamp along the flap of the envelope. And it gives the illusion that the snowflakes are kind of falling through. Um, so you could keep on going. You could stamp even more if you want to. But I just wanted to give kind of a, a blowy, snowy look. <laughs> and then on the front, you can stamp some more. Like so. We're going to add our Merry Christmas sentiment right here. Tuck in our little Panera card. Fold that flat. And then we're going to take, and oh, I have green on my fingers. I may have to do that over. <laughs> I'm like, where's all that green coming from? Obviously from the ink pad. All right. Ah, uh, the beauty of pre-recorded. <laughs> so I fixed that and put on a new fresh one. We've got our gift card in there. We're going to close it shut. And then we're going to take this fun ribbon. Now you can tie it in a bow or you can tie it in a knot. I would think that most people would probably untie the ribbon. So tying it in a bow allows them to retie it again if they'd like to. Um, otherwise, you could do it in a knot. Save on, you know, the amount of product you use, especially if you're doing lots of gift cards. You could tie it in a knot, and then you can also just teach people to slide it off. Um, so yeah, you could even slide it off if it's a bow. But there's our pretty little gift card holder. And if you want to slide it off, you just, you know, bend it a little bit this way and you can go like that and slide it off and then get it back on. So there's that. And then I've got another version that I did with um, the silver foil, the silver specialty foil, the silver one, and some of the red satin ribbon here. And you can see if we just slide that off, that's what it looks like on the inside. Like that. And I am a big fan of Panera. There's the other Panera gift card. <laughs> So hopefully that gave you a fun idea to do with your envelopes. Um, I have one more idea to share. I saw this really beautiful ornament idea on Facebook. It was shared by Stampin' Up! Um, featuring one of Stampin' Up!'s artisan design team members, Anna Pickering. I think it's Anna, maybe Anna, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, she made a lantern uh, for like a little lantern ornament that was super cute using the mini jam jars. So I'm going to do that using this kit's products and the mini jam jars do an adaptation of it. So what you want to do first is you want to poke a hole in the center of a circular piece. We're just using the one from the kit. The one from the kit is two inches in diameter. So what you do is you take your ruler and you mark the center point and make sure that that center point is the same in all the directions. Once you've found it, you poke your hole. Then you're going to grab some twine and I'm, we're going to use the elegant trim, the silver. And we're going to kind of eyeball measure here. I think I want to have about that much for hanging on the tree. So that means I'm going to trim up a little bit. These, whole, uh, these twine pieces are going to insert into that hole. If you need help, you can grab like a ribbon, a little, I'm sorry, a, a needle threader. Then you do an overhand knot and that creates a nice round 
not there that is not going to pull through that piece okay so you've got it secure now if we look at the mini jam jars you can see that this little part here kind of goes inward a bit um, so when we put this on this is going to be on the top of it we need to put actually like two dimensionals on there so we'll grab one I'm sorry two thicknesses one and then here's our second one like that and now it should be flush with the top of the container and then we're going to add this to the top like so and just press it nice and firm so now we've got the top of our little lantern the light is going to sit inside here and close up so now we want to decorate this portion on the interior you could do it on the outside too but it's going to stay protected if you have your decoration on the inside so let's grab one of those vellum tree pieces carefully remove this piece from this piece now i didn't do it too carefully so we're just going to trim that one because once again we're going to use the negative space so in order for us to use the negative space on this though we need a little bit more of it than we had here because if we wrap this around and granted we're on the outside of the jar but we need to finish off that entire space there so in order to do so you're going to do some freehand um, you're just going to come in and do kind of like a little notch and then another little notch and we're just making the other half of this little whimsical tree here and then you'll want to do the same thing to the other side you can then trim off these little end pieces that look silly <laughs> okay and now I'm gonna cut this in half and I'm gonna cut this one in half because that way we sort of have um, we don't have like one kind of tree on one side and one kind on the other and because this set of three trees is really really tall we're actually gonna cut off some on the bottom here and you can just you know just kind of eyeball it <laughs> because this is gonna get screwed on here and you're not gonna see that when it's tucked into this area here you're not going to see this section so we can go ahead and add that now we can use um, glue dots and I'm just going to use the glue dots that we have in the online store just for quickness but um, you're going to set you can see where you want to put the glue dots on here on the bottom of the tall tree and you can even put one on the bottom of this tree right next to it So now we've got those in there. So then next, we're gonna add a couple of these trees and we're just gonna snip it off right about there. And we'll add those right next to our other ones. For the last part here, you can see I don't have as much space as I thought I needed. I could probably add just two more trees in there. So you can pick either set of trees. We'll just put that up in like that. Isn't that pretty? I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to add a little ribbon to the top. So pretty. Can you imagine a bunch of these hanging on your tree at Christmas time? Um, there's another way that you can do that. You can actually take and grab your envelope <clears throat> and you can peel this down carefully and open it up so that you have not only this much, but a little bit more on each end because of those flaps that come in. And that piece, when wrapped around on the inside of a jar, 
will give you this look if you trim it out. So you just have to trim it and connect the two ends. I put a little extra piece of envelope there so you wouldn't see the um, scraped up portion of the envelope where you had to peel it away. And then you can see what that would look like. Now on that one, I would probably, I mean, at this point you're running out of the, the circles from your kit, right? So you could bring in layering circle dies. And there's some scalp ones, there's some smooth edge ones. I used this one here, which is third, third largest. Um, and I just die cut a, a basic white circle. So I could do the same thing with this piece here and make some um, additional ones the same way. Very fun, right? <laughs> now that you've watched my video, I hope you can see that there is so much more to these kits than meets the eye. With just a few extra supplies and some imagination, you can go beyond and make so much more. Want to give these paper pumpkin kits a try? They're just $22 plus tax per month in the U.S. Shipping is included. You control which months you get your kits and there's no commitment or obligation. And by clicking on my personalized link below and starting your subscription with me as your demonstrator, you will have access to my exclusive paper pumpkin project ideas too. Thank you for watching. It builds creativity to think outside the box. To access Paper Pumpkin kit ideas that I'll share in the future, be sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and my website because I share even more each month in other special blog posts. In fact, click on my website link below so you can access the visual supply list and view close-up photos of all that I've shared today. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.